so uh, so so everyone should know about the uh, Sidur or Chadash. We keep we keep these volumes on the back shelf of the sanctuary. Also on that same shelf, we have this volume. This is called Sidur Eight Ratzon, and uh, what this Sidur does is it has a complete transliteration of the prayers. That is, it has in one column the Hebrew, traditional Hebrew text. It has on the, on the opposite side of the same page a transliteration. So you can read the Hebrew with English letters. Now, I have a, I, I'd love to see everyone in the congregation feel comfortable with reading Hebrew, and we can talk about ways in which we can uh, foster Hebrew reading. And, I, and I've had conversations with some of you about that. But on a week-to-week -week basis, if, if your Hebrew is a little bit rusty uh, or non-existent, what, you can turn to this book and follow along uh, in the Hebrew. And what we've done is uh, in the front cover, we've made a chart so that uh, if, say, I call a certain page from Sim Shalom, which on this chart is labeled NSS, New Sim Shalom. Say we're on page 61, I call page 61 from the Bima. You can look on the chart, and in this book, ER, Eight Ratzon, we would be on page 10. So that you can be on the very same prayer as the entire congregation and follow along with a text that allows you access to the prayer with either a running English translation or a running transliteration so that you can actually say the words with the congregation. So I, uh, we, we've had these available in our congregation for a couple of years and I just want to uh, remind everyone or inform you if you weren't already aware that that's what we have. During this course, it's my hope to use uh, the Sim Shalom as our prim primary resource during the class so that we have a, a sense of geography of the Sidur that we use during uh, uh, during, uh, <laughs> during our class and uh, and that we have familiarity with the Sidur that we have during services. I'll say one more note about the Sim Shalom, and that is uh, at various points where there is typically congregational singing, like who can think of a prayer that we sing together? En Kelohenu. What else? Aleinu. Aleinu. Sort of the the big ticket prayers, the, the uh, you know the the ones that we, we we grow up having in the back of our minds or that we pick up in synagogue, the ones that that we're, we're, we're most likely to have congregational singing. Sim Shalom transliterates those as well. So if I say we're on in Kalohenu, which is uh, uh, page uh, 182, I think. If I remember correctly. It's 182. Uh, 182. So uh, you can see that there's the Hebrew and then there's a transliteration and a translation. Plus this volume, the annotated Or Kadash, has all of the commentary around the margins. Uh, so just be aware that this C doer was designed to be user friendly uh, as compared to previous editions of the C doer. It has uh, in mind, Hebrew readers and non-Hebrew readers in mind. Uh, but for the most part, it's basically Hebrew and translation with occasional transliterations. This volume has a complete running transliteration. So we have different resources here that uh, we can use. Now, uh, what I'd like to do is, after that introduction, I'd like to uh, get to know all of you. And I'd like to go around the table. And in introducing yourself, I'd like to invite you to think about a time in which you were moved to pray. 
Think about a time in which you were moved to pray. And if you're so, if you're willing to share, I, I invite you to share as part of introducing yourself. So a time where you were either moved to pray spontaneously, or you were in a synagogue communal setting and the prayer touched you in some personal way. And I'm interested in hearing about a time where you were personally touched by the act of prayer in some way. Uh, and I guess, I, to, to be fair, I will start. Okay, so I'm Rabbi Ed Bernstein, and I've uh, been here, I'm almost here seven years now. And, uh, and it's an honor to, to be here at Shari Tikva. And I would say one meaningful act of prayer in my life was uh, shortly after 9-11. Some of you may have heard me tell the story, but it's worth telling again in this context. I was serving as a rabbi of a congregation in the New York area, and 9-11 happened. There happened to be people in my congregation who, were, who, who escaped the, the Trade Center. I know someone who ran down 85 flights out of Tower One and made it out. Uh, there were a couple of families in my congregation who lost loved ones in the Trade Center. So I, I felt, I mean, anyone really who was in New York at that time felt connected in a, in a real way to that disaster. And I got a call from the New York Board of Rabbis uh, that they were seeking chaplains at the Family Assistance Center that was set up. And so I, I signed up as a volunteer chaplain to be with families of all faiths to just give them some guidance during this crisis. And it was an amazing center that they set up. They had all these, these agencies come under one roof, uh, government agencies, uh, all kind of insurance agencies. Everyone came together and created this incredible community. So they needed chaplains, and I signed up with the American Red Cross to, uh, to serve as a chaplain. So I went for my first day, and I really didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, at the end of the first session, uh, there's a, ch a head chaplain with the Red Cross who gathers all the chaplains together so that we can debrief, because I mean, we hear a lot of very difficult stuff over the course of a two-hour shift, and there, there needs to be an outlet for the chaplains to debrief and to get that stuff out so that we don't drag it around. So we, we gather, and there were, it, was, it was amazing. There were chaplains of all faiths around, sitting this, around in the circle. There, I was a Jewish chaplain. There was at least one other rabbi. There were Protestant representatives, Catholic. Muslim, Hindu, all around this circle. And it was my first day, and the head chaplain turned to me and said, Rabbi Bernstein, will you lead us in a prayer? And I was just totally tongue-tied. We in Jewish community are, are not so attuned to spontaneous prayer. It's, it's something that other communities, particularly Christian communities, are much more adept at. And she turned to me on the spur of the moment and said, Rabbi, lead us in a prayer. And I just was frozen. Because uh, I'm used to picking up a siddur and, and davening. Uh, I don't always think about praying spontaneously. But something happened, and I was able to think of uh, a verse from the Proverbs uh, or actually from, from Psalms, Hine matovu manayim shevet achim gam yachad. How good it is when uh, literally brothers, but I read it as brothers and sisters, dwell together in harmony. And that was what moved me at the moment, that here were all these people coming together, chaplains of different faiths, people of different faiths coming together to support one another in a difficult crisis. And so that was, that was my prayer that just as we were coming together then, that that spirit would sustain us 
beyond that time. So 